vibration and sound damping? Snake oil? Last couple of days we've had some snake oil questions, seems to me. <laughs> the snakes are out getting oiled up again. Uh, this comes from Ian in Vienna, Austria, and Ian writes, Hi Paul, I'm an old fart too, but I'm new to hi-fi. <laughs> well, join the old farts club. Here we are, a couple of old farts. I've been watching videos suggesting that vibration proofing and sound damping will improve solid state components. I understand the principles of vibration control and sound damping in relationship to a turntable. That improvement is similar to taking a Ford Model T and hot riding it. However, I see people recommending similar actions for a CD transport. I have serious doubts as to whether there is any improvement in the sound output of such modern devices by adding weight and installing sound damping material. Seems to me people just want to play around with new devices. Your thoughts? Well, are you telling me you think audiophiles just want to play around with things? Seriously? <laughs> That's what we do. We like playing around with things. Boys and their toys. So, yeah, that's a good question. I can see the difficulty there because it shouldn't matter. Now, on a turntable, like you say, you can understand that because here's a device that is dependent on the wiggles of a needle. And if you have something that is externally vibrating the turntable that's going to be transferred into the wiggling needle and you're going to hear it. And so obviously the better isolated the plinth, the stand, everything to do with a mechanical device like a turntable makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Yep, going to make a big difference. And we can sort of understand how microphonics, which is the propensity of something to be affected uh, in the manner of a microphone to vibrations, we know that that changes things. So capacitors are microphonic. We know that vacuum tubes are very microphonic. You, you can, if, if you went down to the bottom of our preamp and you yelled into that preamp, you could hear yourself through the speakers. Um, so, oh, somebody's after me. Anyway, we know that vibrations matter, but when it comes to the CD player, we also understand that here's something that is digital, that vibration or no vibration shouldn't matter because we're looking at digital bits. You have a 600 RPM spinning disc with a laser tracking it. But we also remember the Sony Walkman, the, what was the other ones that, um, gosh, well, I don't remember, but we know that that was very prone to vibration. If, if you, because as you're walking, now that's a lot of vibration for walking, but we know that they have big buffers inside of there because the laser, if it has to work too hard, if it's fighting against vibrations, it works harder and you have more errors possible. There's all kinds of things going on, motor noise, whatnot, that can affect the digital signal. So it's kind of understandable. On a modern CD player, it really shouldn't make a whole lot of difference, but I got to tell you, it kind of does. I can, if, if, you, if you want an experiment, if you have a high-end, high-resolving system and you have a CD player, get yourself, I, I think, what are they, 15, 15, 20 bucks, a CD mat. Just get one. They're, they're little mats. They go on top of a CD and listen to it with and without the CD mat. Now, I've used mats for years and I don't do it anymore because it's a pain in the butt and I'm an old fart. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you, it does make a difference, and you can hear it better, worse, eh, I don't know that it's worth the trouble, but as an intellectual exercise, I think it does matter, and I'm not sure if I'm answering your question in the manner that you want, but I do think it matters. They're after me. Okay, so hope that helps, and uh, I will talk to you tomorrow.